I'm Brian Winnikins. We are at Commodity Classic in New Orleans, and thank you to our Commodity Classic sponsors, including the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association, Compere Financial, Anibis Silo Synergy Co-op, and Wisconsin Soybean Growers Association. And joining us is Don Lutz. He is a soybean farmer in Stevens Point, and he is a member of the American Soybean Association Board of Directors. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the things ASA is doing, and also with the Wisconsin Soybean Growers Association, too. And Don, thanks for joining us. Well, first, have to ask, tell us a little bit about the farm. Um, we farm in central Wisconsin. Um, we're kind of right on the edge of what's called the central sands area up there. We do raise corn and soybeans uh, to our east. There's a fair amount of dairy starting to, uh, more dairy farms. As you go west, you'll find a lot of vegetable, potato growers, uh, Del Monte and McCain's both have huge processing plants there in that Stevens Point area. So it's kind of a transition it's a very transitional zone there in that Wisconsin uh, central sands area. A lot of, a lot of irrigation in our area as well. So you're in a transition area. So do you, are your fields like one part's a lot, <laughs> lot more sand and the other part's all clay? Like, kind of like even in Pepin County we have that. We do have some, we probably farm a, a range of about 15 miles. That which is furthest west for us has pretty sandy conditions. The further east that we go, the soil begins to get uh, a little heavier. Uh, but it's still, as you go further east yet, get closer to Appleton area. That way it does, uh, it will even get more more uh, clay and, and a heavier ground as, as, as you move that direction. So uh, let's talk about some of the things going on here at Classic. I'm sure uh, Wisconsin soybean growers, the members, uh, you're on the ASA board. Everyone's talking about these, not only these high soybean prices, but these high soybean inputs. Very much so. And not not just talking about it. Most of us have just experienced it and prior to coming coming here, locking in our inputs, uh, trying to price new crop uh, commodities. Uh, prices are high, but the danger is of those prices dropping without uh, when we've got a lot of investment in the in those inputs. So it is kind of a nervous time, but uh, you know farmers uh, have dealt with these kinds of things before and and uh, as we come to classic, we're looking to talk of some things about the farm bill, uh, some of the issues that we have, how we can improve the supply chain of issues that we have out there. Uh, we're very much watching some of the things going on in the rest of the world. What's China going to be do doing in the, in the buying front? What's going to be the situation in Ukraine as far as the crops going in in that area? So there, there is a lot of interest in a lot of new areas, things that we've not... We, we've always been concerned about the China market, but at the same time, the this area over in Ukraine is a totally new issue for us. We're talking with Don Lutz. Uh, he is a, a Wisconsin soybean grower and a member of the uh, American Soybean Association board here at Commodity Classic. Don, how you know, for consumers, you know, they, they see these these high prices at the pump I, for gas, but even truck drivers are starting to see five dollar a gallon diesel fuel. How can soybeans and soybean growers help in in reducing some of these costs and and make us a little bit more energy independent well we have made a lot of advancements in the biofuels both the on the corn side and the ethanol market but even on the on the diesel side in terms of what we can we can extract from soybean we're getting a lot more oil and a lot more even more refined processes and being able to get a a richer more robust product out of that soybean oil and being able to uh, Oftentimes they're blended, but we can do stronger blends with more uh, with more soybean oil in those. So we do alleviate that. I mean, there's always this debate about fu food versus fuel in some of these conditions, but we're going to have to end up uh, we're going to have to end up making those decisions. Those are going to be hard to do, but uh, um, we are a long ways from being able to have any type of an electrified grid across this country, and we are going to be dependent on those. Um, we see the volatility of international trade on some of the on the oil market. The prices have just really skyrocketed on the cost per barrel of oil. Um, we're going to have to be flexible, and we're going to have to be able to we're going to have to be able to rise to the occasion for those situations where we can. With biodiesel, though, that you know, okay, so Wisconsin soybean growers they 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 ship their beans off. They're made into a soybean oil or maybe even a biodiesel, but there's other products that still come from that, i.e., soybean meal that can be used in livestock still. So aren't we 
just using soybeans for more than just a product. We're using them for multiple products. That's true. And I think that that's, that's a very, very good point. We've, uh, as an industry, if you talk about things like food, it's, in an economic terms, you talk about it as being inelastic. If food is, if food is a, a, a $100 a pound or it's a dollar a pound, you still have a certain very tight range in terms of how much that you can, uh, that how much consumption there is. So anytime we produce more than what the food demand is without any other use for that, that really causes the market to, back, to bottom out. So we're looking for more industrial uses of these products to be able to help absorb some of those uses. And we have some of the things, particularly in the North Country, we've, uh, we've found that the oil that comes out of soybeans is superior to that that comes out of the petroleum in terms of road building. There's a, it's a more elastic. It uh, doesn't do as much frost damage. It can take heavier loads. Uh, a lot of our rural areas now, when they used to were built, they had uh, uh, much much smaller loads, a lot more semis traveling on those roads, and that extra weight loads without a without a strong base. Um, tears a lot of those roads up and there's a lot of maintenance on them. So we see these as just uh, improvements, but it's also just, it's, it's, the, it's the continued development of that soybean industry and what we can do with those products that are raised. They are, they are renewable and there's, I think that there's a lot of interest in, in being able to leverage that. We, we've made improvements in production. We, we've made improvements in terms of being environmentally to grow these crops, and, uh, and I think they're going to be a great service to America and the world in the future in meeting a lot of those environmental needs. That's Don Lutz. See, he is a Wisconsin soybean grower and a member of the American Soybean Association Board of Directors. From Commodity Classic, I'm Brian Winnikens.